a pleasant day, STEM learners. This is Sir Peter, your statistics and probability teacher. For today's discussion, we will talk about the one field and the two field test. So at the end of this video lesson, we should be able to identify the parameter to be tested and illustrate the direction of a given test. So in a mathematical model of hypothesis testing, we always determine the probability of obtaining the sample results if the null hypothesis is true. So our job here is to prove and disprove a certain claim. So thus, when we want to represent it graphically into a mathematical model, the best way to illustrate the probabilities is using the normal curve or the normal distribution. So in the distribution, if it is greater than the mean, then the direction can be shown on the right tail of the curve. While if it is less than the mean, then it can be shown on the left tail of the normal curve. So don't forget that the best model is always the normal curve. So in a non-directional test, which is also called a two-tailed test, so it gives us an idea that the researcher is not interested, it is not interested, okay, whether it is greater than or less than, but it is just interested if they are no significant difference. However, if a researcher is interested whether it is greater than or less than, then it becomes a directional test. So the two possible directional tests is a left tail or a right tail, respectively. So a non-directional test is also called a two-tail test. So notice that in our mathematical model, our um, alpha is located on both the left and the right. So it is represented by alpha over 2 and alpha over 2, which are our rejection region. And this unshaded region, 1 minus alpha, is our non-rejection region. So observe that the probability is found on both the tails of the distribution. Now, for a directional test, it is also sometimes called a one-tailed test. No? So there are two types of directional tests, the left-tailed and the right-tailed test. Okay? Notice that if the rejection region or alpha no, is found on the left of the distribution, then that is a one-tailed left-tailed test. And our non-rejection region is located on the right. However, for a directional test, um, the probability is found on the right side no, or the right tail of the distribution. So observe alpha. This is where we reject the null hypothesis. And this one minus alpha gives us an idea where we fail to reject the null hypothesis. So let's have an illustrative example. If Pedro claims that the average length of a binary song is five minutes, then this is a two-tailed test. You can clearly see it on the alternative hypothesis because we are not interested of either a greater than or a less than. However, if Pedro claims that it is greater than five minutes, then the alternative hypothesis becomes greater than. So obviously, we have a one-tailed, right-tailed test. Making it less than would mean we have a one-tailed and a left-tailed test. Let's have another example. Let's determine whether the test is two-tailed or one-tailed. And if it is one-tailed, let us name it as left-tailed or right-tailed. So a nutritionist claims that her developed Bread is fortified with vitamin B. So notice that the word fortified would mean what? Very good. The correct answer is one tail, right tail. 
Second, a musician believes that listening to a classical music affects mood. So the word affects doesn't mean that it is interested in either greater than nor um, less than. So it means we only have an in test. Now, a storekeeper thinks that the time of the day influences sale of the ice cream. Again, the word influences means inequality. So we have a two-tail test. Insufficient sleep can cause poor academic performance. From the word itself, the word poor means left side. So we have a one-tail left tail test. And a mother wants to prove that reading books to children um, improves their thinking process. So the word improve means a positive change, right? So that is a one-tailed writing test. So I hope that these examples are already good enough for you to answer the activity on your modified assessment. So again, this is Sir Peter your statistics and probability teacher.